Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a lemma from geometry. This is a very common lemma that you will see in some problems and it's used to disguise a point in problems. So I invite you to try this problem out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 30 minutes, not more than an hour and a half. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you draw the diagram, give this problem a go for the next 15 minutes. And now without further ado, let's begin. So in the triangle ABC, we need to prove that, well, immediately we need to prove something, that the intersection of the side bisector of BC and the angle bisector of BAC meet on the circumcircle. Okay, so of the triangle ABC, and then furthermore, we have I, if I is the in-center, J is the AX center of ABC. We must prove that if this intersection is M, that MB is MC is MI is MJ. So first thing first, let's draw the diagram. Okay, so now we have the diagram. And with this, first things first, with this problem, the intersection of this angle bisector and the side bisector. We must prove that it is on a circumcircle. And that seems, to put it mildly, difficult. It's more difficult to prove that an intersection is on the circumcircle in general. This is speaking in generalities. Then it is to prove that if you intersect one thing with a circumcircle, then the other point thing will also lie there. And here, this is especially the case because when you try to work with just this intersection as it's defined now, it's difficult. You don't really have that much. However, if we take, say, M to be the intersection of the angle bisector and the circumcircle, call this point M, we can call whatever we want at this point. We're not dealing with the second part just yet. And now what do we have? Well, let's do the angles. Alpha half, alpha half. We really don't care about I and J at this point. So let's see, what do we have? We have the angle MCB is MAB is alpha half. And this angle right here, MBC is MAC is also alpha half. And now we are sort of done, right? Here's why. I might going to take three minutes and figure out why we're done. And the answer is, well, we've talked, We've said M is the intersection of the angle bisector, right? And the circumcircle. And we can, and now we have to prove that this point is on the side bisector of BC. If we do that, then there's only one such point. We've done our thing. We proved that this point is on the circumcircle, one thing, and the angle bisector, the other thing. That's how we defined it. And then we've proved an extra property for it that it's on the side bisector. And that is the same as taking the point that's the side bisector, angle bisector intersection, and proving that it's on the circle circle, right? That's sort of the thing. You're proving properties for this one specific point. And this is done because if MB is MC, that means it's on the side bisector of BC. Now, for the second part, this intersection really only exists. There's one intersection that exists, and not infinitely many, if and only if A, B, and AC are different. I'll give you that. I did not put that in the problem. And with this in mind, I invite you to pause. So before you pause, let me just say like what the X center is, because it's this is an introductory sort of geometry for competitive mathematics lemma. And the X center is the point where you have like, just like you have the in circle, which is a point that is the center of a circle which touches the side, the sides of ABC, right? the internal like segments of the triangle ABC. The X circle opposite A is the circle that touches the side BC and the extensions of A, B, and AC. And there exists one such point, one such circle, and here's why. Take the internal angle bisector here of BAC and the external angle bisector of ABC. So, and call this intersection J. And now what you will have it, this, this whole thing, because this whole thing is beta half, beta half, this is beta, the external bisec angle bisector, because this external angle is 180 minus beta, that means that this cuts it at 90 minus beta half, or in other words, because alpha half plus gamma half, alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180, have it all, you have 
90 is equal to beta half plus alpha half plus gamma half. So 90 minus beta half is alpha half plus gamma half. And so here we have alpha half, this is gamma half, and this is alpha half plus gamma half. I just like writing pluses more than minuses. It might be because I'm a positive person, who knows? But now what do you have for this point? Once you've defined it like this, you'd have that if you drew perpendiculars from J to these sides, you would have what? If you drew a perpendicular here and a perpendicular here, you would have that because this is, you have this same side and you have all the angles are the same. You have this is alpha half plus gamma half, alpha half plus gamma half, 90, 90. You would get that this is equal to this. Now you draw it by like a, what's this called? A perpendicular from J to AC. And now you look at these two triangles, J, J, A, this sort of, what's this called? A, perpendicular point and JA, this other perpendicular point. And you'll again have AJ, angle, 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 side, angle, congruency, which would imply that this is equal to this, equal to this, i.e. there's a circle that touches all these points. Why does it touch them? Well, because it's at a 90 degree angle here, like from the center to this point, is 90, a 90 degree angle, ergo it's touching it. So with this, in, with this sort of introduction of what a ex eccenter is, which was necessary, let's get back to our problem. So we already have that MB is equal to MC, right? So how can we prove that say MI is MB? And I invite you here to pause for two to three minutes and try to figure that out. And the answer is we do some angle chasing. So what is the angle here? We have beta half plus alpha half, right? the IBM angle. And then we, that means we need BIM to also be beta half plus gamma half. No, beta half plus alpha half, but we already have that because it's the angle that's the sum of these two, IBA and IAB, their sum is this, and this is alpha half plus beta half, i.e. MI is MB. And now we're left with proving that MJ is MB, is MC, is MI. Why do we have that? I invite you to pause for two to three minutes and figure it out. And the answer is we have it because we have this angle right here is gamma. Like you can do this forwards or backwards. Backwards is you have MBJ is how much? Because this is alpha half, this means this is gamma half. So we need this to be gamma half. But if this was gamma half and this was gamma half, this would be gamma. And then you go, oh wait, but this is gamma because this angle is equal to this angle. And so this is gamma half. And so MJ is MB. And we've proved everything that we need to prove. This is a useful lemma. Why is it useful? This point here gets hidden and redefined in many different problems. Like sometimes people will call this, take the circumcenter of BIC. That's one more. Like you can still figure it out that it's on the circumcircle. It's just a bit more difficult. But really when the point is defined as this intersection of this angle bisector and this side bisector, that's when it's kind of difficult. That's when it's kind of difficult to figure out like, oh, it's this point, it's on the circumcircle. Because once you have a point on the circumcircle, mind you, you have a lot of angles with the other points, which is what makes this whole thing useful as a lemma. And this finishes up our problem and as always, Thanks for problem solving.